Hey everybody. Uh, as I'm getting more into some of these a little bit larger brushless motors, at least larger than what I've been into at this point, uh, I'm starting to become a little bit more concerned about uh, amperage draw. So I decided it was time to build a thrust stand, a very simple one, and get a watt meter. So uh, Jeff at Heads Up RC, I bought a uh, AEO RC P0 watt meter. It's a hundred 100 watt, no, 100 amp uh, watt meter, and uh, dirt cheap. It was like uh, 20 bucks, 21 bucks, something like that. Probably not the most accurate thing, but it was the cheapest thing out there. And I've done some tests with it, hooked onto, the, onto a regulated power supply, and I was impressed with the numbers I was seeing as far as amperage draw matching what the power supplies readouts were saying, and this was a nice power supply, so I have a lot of faith in that. I think the accuracy is actually very well on the watt meter. I'm using the Turnigy battery back there. It's a 3S 2200. It's only a 20C battery, so I'm testing a pretty hot motor here. This motor is a 705 watt EMP 3536 1700 kV outrunner with a 7x4 APC E prop on it. Uh, 60 amp electronic speed control on the test stand there. We're using the servo tester off to the right right here to be our throttle input for our speed control to throttle the motor up while under test. So we're going to be able to see the thrust, which this scale's been zeroed out with the weight load on it. So we're going to be able to see the thrust in kilograms, we're going to be able to see the wattage and the amperage, and basically that's what we're looking for. So I've got a flashlight here. The little screen, only downside on that watt meter is it'd be really nice if it was backlit, but it's not. So Outside in the daylight, it'd probably be alright, but here in the shop, not the ideal situation. So we're going to ease into it here. Right off the bat, we're showing 269 grams of thrust at 76 watts. There's 120 watts. 9.6 amps. And bump it up. We're going to top it out here. Hang on to your shit in case it blows. motor bearings cool down and coils, uh, stators cool down just a little bit there by just letting the motor run at its slowest speed just to kind of keep air circulating to cool everything down. Uh, it was like, that was like 380 watts, um, over a thousand grams of thrust. I got to run the numbers on that to see how many ounces that translates to, but I must say I'm impressed with that 7x4 prop. That thing is really screaming, really pushing some air. I could feel it blowing up hitting the roof and then coming back down reflexing off the ceiling so um, I'm going to work the numbers now my test stand worked pretty good I might need to add a little bit more weight to the base of it that's what this steel ring is right here just to keep it from walking around uh, that thing was really just buzzing and vibrating pretty intensely there but uh, anyway thanks for watching and I uh, hope this gives somebody some ideas on how to make a cheap thrust stand and a nice little setup here for you know basically I got about 20 bucks wrapped up in this little test rig right here. So, not bad for what it's doing and info it's giving me. Later. Okay, I've got some numbers now on uh, the, after I went and crunched some math after that uh, first thrust test, thrust test I've done um, on the thrust stand. I put a brand new fresh charge pack on right after I shut the camera down and ran it with a brand new charge pack 
it hit 450 watts at 39 amps and produced 1,138 kilograms of thrust. That thrust, 1,138 kilograms, translates to 40.64 ounces or you could say 2.54 pounds. So just a hair over two and a half pounds of thrust out of the 7x4 prop on that EMP motor that came from Leader Hobby. The motor is 35, 36, 1700 kV. And if you take the wattage, 450 watts, and you divide that by 746, which is the total watts in one horsepower, that will give you the horsepower, which breaks down to be 0.55 horsepower we just achieved. So just a hair over a half a horsepower with just a hair over two and a half pounds of thrust at 39 amps. I'm impressed with that motor and this is by far the most powerful motor I've got. Now if you're wondering what this is going to be going into, it's ridiculous overkill for what is planned for it, but it's going into a pop wing which is being sold by Nitro Planes. It uh, basically it's a, a EPP flying wing with some carbon fiber reinforcement spars in it. Pretty tough little plane. Uh, it's designed for a, a smaller battery and a smaller motor. Well, I hollowed out the battery tray on the front nose of the thing, determined to get a 2200 in there, and I realized that the motors I had were just too small to balance it, and I didn't want to add dead weight to the wings. So my thought was, let's increase our weight with the motor since the motor's on the back and it's a pusher on that plane. So that was my thought for getting this motor, and I'm just, because it is such a big motor, I knew I had to be careful about my battery I'm going to be flying with. Uh, my ESC. I needed to know exactly how much of a hog that motor was going to be because it's going to be a sick overkill in that pop wing. I'll probably never really be able to open the motor up anyway, I suspect. So, but it just feels better not adding just dead lead to the plane to get the weight balance right. I'd rather do, I'd rather add the weight somehow with something usable, whether it be battery, more powerful ESC, uh, or a bigger motor. So in this case, the bigger motor, since the motor's on the back, and will have a lot of influence on the CG just by upping its weight quite a bit. So, enjoy.